Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, thank you very much indeed for um, having me along this morning. And as a fellow citizen, thank you very much for all the work you've been doing. Uh, I've been very conscious of it. I've been drawing my uh, students in Belfast's attention to the work of the Constitution. And uh, you know, we're very grateful for your time over the many weekends, including this weekend, uh, for what you're doing. My role is, is very briefly, I suppose, is to provide some sort of a, a framework um, for the subsequent speakers and hopefully for your deliberations uh, later on about the role of the uh, electoral system in respect to one house of the Oireachtas, uh, Dáil Éireann. And I think uh, when I set about writing the briefing paper and again the presentation this morning, um, I thought it might be most useful to maybe go back a little bit to basics, as it were, and just to think about what it is uh, exactly the, the Constitution says uh, in respect of the role of, of Parliament and the Executive. And in order to do that, we might just reflect briefly on the fact that in most uh, democratic states, uh, what you tend to find, most if not all democratic states, what you tend to find is that there is a three-way division of, of power, okay, between what are gen generically known as the, the pillars of state. Okay? So we have a legislative pillar, an executive pillar, and a judicial pillar. And the idea behind this is that each of these pillars will act as a check and a balance on each other, such that no one pillar can accumulate too much power, okay, to the detriment of the other two pillars, as it were. And this is the kind of the basic idea in constitutional theory. And you find these pillars of power reflected in pretty much all constitutions uh, since the American Constitution, by and large. And they're reflected in the Constitution of Ireland of 1937, except the terms used are different. We have Instead of the legislative pillar, we have the erectus. Uh, we refer to the executive pillar as the government. And of course, to the judicial pillar, that's taken care of by the courts. But for the purposes of deliberations today and, and over this weekend, what we're really interested in is these two pillars and the interplay between them. Okay, and this is very fundamental to the Irish system of, of government, as we'll see. Why, just for avoidance of doubt, just to be clear about what we're talking about here, and the Constitution is very explicit, it says that the erectus has three elements to it. It has the two houses of parliament, as, as, as has already been mentioned, uh, Dáil Éireann and Shannad Éireann, and of course the, the presidency as well. So we have three elements to the Erectus, and then we have the executive, uh, which is referring to the prime minister, or Taoiseach, and the 14 ministers as well, which we also call the cabinet. We tend to interchange the terms cabinet, executive, and, and government in Ireland as more or less meaning, meaning the same thing. Okay. Now, what is interesting, and we are really focusing very much on the electoral system to Dáil Éireann, but in effect we are also focusing on the electoral system uh, for the government. And the reason I say this is because a defining feature of the Irish constitution, and remember at the start I said this idea where we have a separation of powers between legislative, executive and judicial, one of the interesting features, and this makes the Irish constitution almost unique, certainly in European terms, is that the Constitution very explicitly says that the members of the executive, of the executive pillar of state, must come, they must come from within the two houses of the Oireachtas. And normally, as most of you would be aware, over the history of the state, most of them have come from one house only, Dáil Éireann. So you have this perfect overlap. And this is not normal in a lot of other countries where people from outside Parliament can be appointed to the government. So in effect, we have what you might call a, a fusion of the executive and legislative pillars, so almost a, a non-separation of powers. But that's the way Irish government runs, okay? We're kind, of, we're kind of used to that. We think of general elections as elections of government, when in fact they are elections uh, to, to Dáil Éireann, to one chamber only. But it is because of this fusion of the Oireachtas, the two houses of parliament and the executive, uh, that we tend to think of it as, as elections uh, to government, uh, in effect. Okay, so bearing that in mind, what I want to say to you now is a little bit about what the Constitution says about the role of Parliament and specifically uh, what the role of parliamentarians should be and uh, particularly TDs, the members of, of Dáil Éireann. And the Constitution sets out a number of tasks which it expects our representatives in Parliament to do. Uh, first and foremost, I mean, there's absolutely no... Um, mm. Uh, what do they call it? There's no confusion uh, in the Constitution about this. The Constitution says article, in Article 15 that the Oireachtas, its primary duty is to make law. It is a law-making body. Okay? It is the legislative pillar of state. And therefore, one must assume that representatives to the Houses of Parliament must have some competence in law-making. It doesn't mean they have to be lawyers, but they must be aware of their duty to make law for the state, 
But equally, we might assume they must also be conscious of the effects of those laws on the state, on society as general. Okay, so this is one of the reasons why the electoral system is so important. It's going to produce people who are going to be responsible for making law that is binding on everybody in the state. Secondly, the Constitution says that members, TDs, members of Dáil Éireann, have a representative duty. Just as members of the Senate, there are 60 senators, as, as you'll be aware, also have a representative duty. They represent groups of various sort, was the idea. But TDs represent constituencies, and the formula used was one TD for every 20 to 30,000 members of the uh, population, which was the same in the 1922 constitution. So that, that just carried on. Um, but the idea here is that those TDs, and remember Chuck de Dalla, a literal translation, is of course a, a delegate to the assembly. They are there to represent people. So we must assume for that that an important, another important role of parliament after lawmaking is to deliberate on issues that are of concern to constituencies or the people in those constituencies. So parliament performs a very important deliberative uh, function so that people elected into parliament are able to discuss the pressing matters of the day, what is important to the country, what is important to the people uh, in the state, as it were. Thirdly, and very importantly, and I've, I've mentioned this already, the constitution tasks Dáil Éireann, one house alone, with the creation of the government. And this is very, very important. Um, it asked the Dáil to find from amongst its membership, okay, uh, sub to nominate somebody to the president who would be appointed as prime minister or Taoiseach. And then the second step is that person goes to Dáil Éireann and asks Dáil Éireann to approve his or her, it's always been a, a he, uh, his or her nominations to the 14 other ministerial portfolios, again to be appointed by the president. And this is a very important task that is given to Dáil Éireann only. The Senate has no function in this whatsoever. Okay? Relatedly, Article 28.4.1 says that the government shall be responsible to Dáil Éireann. One line, but very, very fundamental uh, to the system of uh, political accountability uh, in Ireland. So the Dáil, again not the Senate, but the Dáil is explicitly mentioned as having a role in overseeing the work of the executive which it has elected in effect. So the Dáil elects the executive and it must oversee the work that it does. And it has a variety of means to do that, uh, like parliamentary questions and through debates and through creation of, of committees and inquiring into the work of uh, government. Relatedly, but again, I, I need to mention this because it's very explicit in the Constitution, the Dáil alone, members of the Dáil are tasked with financial oversight, making sure that money that is voted for on by Parliament is spent in a way that is consistent with, the, um, with what Parliament has agreed to uh, with government, in effect. Um, financial oversight is a fundamental task of any Parliament, in effect. The Constitution in Ireland says it is the main task, is one of the main tasks of Dáil Éireann. And many of you, will, of course, will have heard of the Committee of Public Accounts, more commonly known as the Public Accounts Committee or the PAC. It is a committee of Dáil Éireann alone, and its main job is to annually oversee uh, the spending of the previous year's, or the previous two years, budget. And of course, passing the budget is, a, is an annual, a very important task performed by Dáil Éireann uh, every year. The government proposes the budget and Dáil Éireann must um, approve it. Finally, just for the sake of completeness, there are a number of other tasks which the uh, Parliament is asked to do uh, in the Constitution. Declaration of emergency, it's only happened on a number of occasions, 1939, 1972. Uh, the removal of a judge and the impeachment of a president. The latter two tasks have never actually happened. Um, but they are there. They are written in the Constitution that these are other functions of the Parliament as well. So we must assume that the people who are elected to the Parliament are able to do all of these things. Okay? This is what we expect of our parliamentarians. This is what the Constitution is saying you must do. These are your jobs. So we have to think about that when reflecting on the electoral system and who we're putting into, into office. And finally, just again for the sake of completeness, there are some explicit, the only policy area in the Constitution, uh, which, the, which is spelled out in the Constitution, uh, refers to that of international affairs, where there are any, any international treaties or agreements which the government seeks to enter into must be uh, put before the houses, um, and specifically the Dáil, uh, for approval. Okay, so they're the tasks, as I say, that parliamentarians uh, are charged with, and principally what you can see from the graphic there, or from the, the slide, is that the vast majority fall on members of Dáil Éireann. And the reason I'm saying this is because, of course, it is the election system for Dáil Éireann which we're here discussing this weekend, and it's perhaps to be borne in mind uh, in the course of the deliberations. 
How many people are we talking about here? Well, we can see that the numbers have fluctuated since the first Electoral Act in 1923. Uh, the low point there was uh, about 138 in 19, sorry, 1935. And since 1980, we've had 166 members uh, elected to Dáil Éireann. And some of you may be aware that quite recently a piece of legislation was passed, the Electoral Amendment Act 2013. Uh, which um, provides that at the next general election in Ireland there will be a reduction of eight seats. So Dáil Éireann will then be 158 seats. 158 members of Dáil Éireann who are charged with performing the tasks in the previous slide. Okay? Now, finally, I would just like to say to you that everything I've described to you so far is, you could almost understand it as the skeleton. I am providing you with what the Constitution says, the framework for governing in Ireland, and this is the very formal way of looking at it. But of course, it is a complete fiction if we do not take into account the reality of political parties, because everything that I've described to you, almost everything I've described to you, happens in the context of the existence of political parties. And political parties very much uh, dominate parliament, they dominate elections, they dominate everything we think of in terms of Irish political life. So we cannot think just of what the Constitution says. There is no mention in the Constitution at all of political parties, okay? But we must conceive of political parties when thinking about reform and, of course, the electoral system. And one of the interesting features of Ireland is that because of the existence of political parties, um, Irish parliamentary politics has tended to be one in which we have a very adversarial system of politics and one in which the executive is generally the largest party or parties uh, in Dáil Éireann. And the executive uh, is the members, the front bench members of those parties who can consistently control the majority of seats in the Dáil. Okay? And for that reason, Irish politics, an interesting feature or characteristic of Irish parliamentary politics, is the kind of zero-sum way with zero sum way in which our politics has developed and in which way our parliament has developed such that since 1922, zooming forward to you know, today, what you tend to have seen is the executive exerting ever more control over what it is that parliament does, and in particular Dáil Éireann, because it controls the majority of seats. And when we talk about parliament in Ireland, parliament overseeing the executive, really what we're talking about here is the minority parliamentary opposition trying to hold the executive, who controls a majority of seats, to account. And it's difficult. And for that reason, you always hear opposition parties saying, we would like there to be reform, we would like more opportunity to scrutinise government. And governments, of course, are reluctant to do this. Governments have programmes, they have agendas, there are things they want to do, they want to get on with it. And so you have this tension. But what's interesting, as I say, and uh, subsequent speakers will deal with this, is the degree to which Irish governments can actually control uh, Dáil Éireann and control the parliamentary uh, agenda. So we have developed quite an adversarial system of politics. If you're in government, you get all the goodies. If you're in opposition, it's a very difficult place to be uh, in Ireland compared to other parliaments. And there is always this trade-off then between efficiency versus accountability because legitimately governments, executives that are elected want to get on with things. They don't want to be unnecessarily held up by the opposition raising, you know, complaints and making up uh, excuses to try and delay the government, as it were. But equally, there is a very important issue here of accountability, going back to that constitutional uh, provision that says the government must be accountable to Dáil Éireann. So there's always this tension there between the efficiency of government doing what it wants to do and doing it by controlling a majority of seats, not just in the Dáil, but in every pretty much every committee in Parliament as well, uh, versus the accountability, that government is accountable for what it does as well. So I will leave it there and I will hand over to, uh, back to the chairman uh, or on to the next speaker. And I, I hope that provides you with some food for thought for your deliberations. Thank you. Thank you.